Mama was the fattest girl in the village. She had always been fat since she was a baby. But as she grew older, she became even bigger. Because of this, she had no friends and was often alone. She was constantly mocked and harassed by the other girls in the village, who called her names like Hippo, Will, and Buffalo. They made fun of her clothes, which were always too tight or too short for her. They laughed and pointed fingers at her, and when she wasn't looking, they would keep stones in her way, hoping she would fall so that they could laugh some more. This made her very unhappy and depressed. One day, a new family moved into the hut beside theirs. They had a daughter named Ngozi, who was just about the same age as the former. Ngozi was slender and pretty, with long black hair and brown eyes. She wore colorful beads and bracelets, and had a lot of beautiful Ankara dresses. Ngozi quickly became popular among the other girls who admired her and wanted to be her friend. The former was curious about Ngozi and hoped that they could be friends since they were neighbors. One day, she summoned up courage and decided to approach her while they were at the stream. She walked up to Ngozi, who was surrounded by a group of other girls, and said timidly, Hi, my name is Ifoma. I live in the hut next to yours, and I would like to be your friend if you don't mind. Ngozi looked at Ifoma and laughed an evil laugh. She said loudly for everybody to hear, Ifoma, why would I want to be your friend? Why would I be friends with a girl as fat and ugly as you are? You are repulsive. Get away from here and never speak to me again. She then laughed, and so did the other girls. They all pointed at a former and chanted, Heavy, heavy, biggy, biggy, himpo, nobody likes you. A former felt a surge of pain and anger in her heart. She ran away crying and went home. She locked herself in her hut and refused to come out, and because she was sad, she ate even more food finishing all the food meant for the entire family for dinner. She wished she could disappear or be someone else. A few days later, a royal messenger arrived in the village. He announced that Obinna, the king of the kingdom, was looking for a bride, and that he would visit the village soon to choose one. He said that all the eligible maidens in the village should prepare themselves for the king's arrival and that the king would pick the most beautiful and charming one of them all. The news caused a lot of excitement and commotion in the village. All the girls except the former started to dress up and adorn themselves with their best clothes and jewelry. They had practiced their manners and poses, hoping to impress the king. Ngozi was the most confident and ambitious of them all. She was very sure that since she was so beautiful, the king will fall in love with her at first sight, and that she will become the future queen. Ifoma, on the other hand, had no interest in the king or his visits. She felt that because she was fat, he would never choose her, and that she would be humiliated and rejected by him. She stayed in her hut all day feeling sorry for herself, and wished that she could escape from her miserable life. When the day of the king's visit finally came, the king arrived in the village with his entourage. He was tall and handsome, with a golden crown on his head and a leopard skin cloak around his shoulders. He greeted the village chief and elders and proceeded to meet the girls immediately. He walked around the village looking at each girl carefully and asking them questions about their names and families. The girls tried their best to charm him with smiles and compliments. But he was not impressed. Ngozi was the most aggressive of them all. She showed off her looks and covetous figure in a seductive manner. The king was not impressed by Ngozi either. He found them too vain, too loud or too shallow. He was looking for a girl who was not only beautiful, but also humble and kind. He was about to give up and leave the village when he noticed a hut that he had not visited yet. He asked the village chief who lived there, and the chief told him that it was Ifoma's parents' hut. 
The chief said that Ifoma was the fattest girl in the village and that she was always alone in her hut sewing or talking to her plants. He urged the king not to bother checking on Ifoma because she was not his type. She was fat and very unattractive. The king was intrigued by Ifoma and decided to see her for himself. He walked around her hut and knocked on her door. Ifoma answered very faintly, Who is it? The king responded, Ifoma, please don't be afraid. I mean you no harm. I just want to talk to you and get to know you. Ifoma hesitated, but she felt a strange pull towards the king's voice. She wondered what he wanted to talk to her about, and so she opened the door and let him in. When she opened the door, she saw the king standing outside smiling at her. He was tall and very handsome, with beautiful brown eyes and a kind face. He looked at her with interest and not disgust or pity. The king walked into the hut and looked around the hut. It was very small and simple, but also very clean. He saw the dresses that the former had sewn, and he was very impressed. He then looked at Ifoma herself very carefully and saw a very beautiful woman. She was plump and curvaceous and had a beautiful oval face and large eyes. He said to her, I am delighted to meet you, Ifoma. You have such a beautiful smile. Ifoma was sincerely surprised by the king's words. She did not expect him to notice or appreciate her. Thank you, she said. You are very kind. Ifoma and the king smiled at each other and felt a warm and tender feeling in their hearts. They spent the next few hours talking, laughing and eating. Ifoma shared her past with the king. She told him of the humiliation she had gone through at the hands of her cares just because of her wits. The king shook his head sadly and told Ifoma that what he admired about her was her size. In fact, the minute he laid his eyes on her, he was attracted by her beauty and her curvaceous body. But most importantly, he appreciated the fact that she was very industrious and seemed to have a kind heart. Ifoma was overjoyed. She finally felt seen. Regardless of her size, the king was in love with her. Meanwhile, outside the hut, the village was in an opera. The other girls, especially Ungozi, were furious and jealous that the king had chosen to visit Ifoma and spend so long in her hut. Ngozi had always disliked Ifoma. She hated her for being different and not fitting in. But what she hated the most about Ifoma was that despite her being fat, she seemed happy and found joy in simple things. For a long time, Ngozi had made Ifoma's life miserable. She did everything she could do to make her feel worthless. She taunted her, humiliated her, and insulted her. She even stole her belongings and broke her water pot several times just to make her cry so that she could laugh at her tears. When all this didn't seem to break Ifoma, Ngozi kept telling her that she was worthless and that her existence was a mistake. When Ngozi realized that the king liked Ifoma, and looked at Ifoma with admiration and not disgust or pity. She knew she had to deal with Ifoma once and for all. She could not accept that Ifoma, the fat, ugly loser, had won the handsome king and was soon going to become the future queen and the most envied girl in the village. Ngozi just could not accept this and so she decided to destroy it all. He decided that she was going to take away Ifoma's love and happiness and make her suffer more than ever. In fact, she decided that she was going to go to the witch once and for all. The witch lived in the forest, far away from the village. She was feared and avoided by everyone, because she was known to have dark and dangerous powers. She could cast spells and curses, and could manipulate fate, fortune, and the future, and make people mad, sick, and even dead. In fact, she was willing to do anything for a price. Ngozi was not really afraid of the witch, as she had gone there a couple of times. 
In fact, the only thing she was afraid of was losing the king and seeing a former happy. She was willing to pay any price and to take any risk. The entire that evening, Ngozi gathered all the cowries that she had saved and stepped off into the forest, walking for hours until she reached the witch's hut. She knocked on the door and said, Great witch of Uli, I need your help. I have come to make a deal with you. The witch opened the door and looked at Ngozi with a sly and wicked smile. She said to her, Well, 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 what do we have here? A pretty little girl with a big problem. Come in, come in, let's talk. Ngozi entered the hut and saw that it was dark and filled with strange and scary things. She saw skulls, bones, feathers and bottles of poison. The witch sat in front of a boiling cauldron and beside her was a black cat, a snake and a crow. She felt a chill down her spine, but she was not afraid. Ruining a farmer's life was worth any price she had to pay. So tell me, pretty little girl, what is your problem? What do you want me to do for you? The witch asked. Oh, witch, I want you to make the king love me. I want you to make him hate a farmer. Make him choose me and make him mine. I want you to leave a farmer with nothing. Oh, I see. You want me to make a love spell to enchant the king? Hmm. This is a very serious spell, my dear. It is not one to be toyed with, the witch replied. But Umkozi was not fazed. Yes, she said. Yes, I want the spell. Can you do it? The witch answered, of course I can do it. But I will do it for a small price. Name your price, witch. I will pay, Umkozi said. The witch laughed. My price is simple, pretty little girl. My price is your soul. Ngozi was shocked. My soul? What do you mean my soul? Yes, the witch said. I mean your soul. I want your essence and your spirit. I want that thing that makes you who you are. That thing that makes you human. What will you do with my soul? Ngozi asked. Can't I give you money? I don't want your money, the witch replied. I want your soul. I will keep it and use it for my pleasures. I will use it to make more spells and potions to make myself stronger and more powerful. I will become the best and I will have it all. Ngozi became scared. What will happen to me without my soul? The witch let out a loud, high-pitched laugh. You will lose it, she shrieked. Of course you will lose yourself. You will lose your feelings, thoughts and dreams. You will become nothing. But will I have the king? Will I have his love? And will I become queen? Ngozi asked. Ngozi took the potion and looked at it. She saw the red foul-smelling liquid and felt a twinge of doubt. But she ignored it quickly and drank the potion, giving the witch her soul. She immediately screamed and felt a surge of pain and a wave of nausea. She fell to the ground writhing in agony. She screamed and cried and begged for mercy and was eventually drifted into a dark dreamless sleep where she saw nothing. Hi besties, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more interesting stories. Thank you.